about Expendables 3. What are you going to do? This is an NBC News special report. Here's Brian Williams. Having just shared this news with our nightly news audience, we wanted to come on for the rest of the country and share the sad news that Robin Williams has died on the West Coast. He was 63 years old. His wife confirming the death, also confirming he's been battling severe depression of late. The family is asking for privacy. Of course, he became famous as an improv artist, as a stand-up comedian, mentored by the legendary Jonathan Winters. Then came Mork and Mindy and the serious movie roles, Good Morning Vietnam, Good Will Hunting, for which he was awarded an Oscar, The Dead Poet Society, Mrs. Doubtfire, The Birdcage, on and on, revered as an entertainer in America, simply put, one of the funniest men in the United States for years and years. The death being confirmed tonight from Los Angeles, Robin Williams has died at the age of 63. More tonight on your late local news and tomorrow morning on Today. I'm Brian Williams, NBC News, New York. I'm Jason Sudeikis and Olivia Wilde on Wet. How did I? This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good day. President Obama is interrupting his vacation in Martha's uh, Vineyard to address two major stories we've been following, the U.S. military operation in Iraq and the continued violence in Ferguson, Missouri, following the shooting of an 18-year-old unarmed man. There have been uh, critics now uh, saying the police response after a fifth night of violence there was heavy-handed, perhaps military. Claire McCaskill, senator from Missouri, saying the response by police has become the problem instead of the solution. The president expected to address that. Let's go to Kristen Welker, who's traveling with the president. Kristen, this has not been a restful break for the president. It certainly hasn't been. This is the second time the president will have addressed the nation since he started this vacation over the weekend. We know he's been monitoring the developments in Ferguson quite closely. Two days ago, releasing a statement calling the death of Michael Brown heartbreaking and urging calm there while an investigation continues. As you point out, there have been several days of riots, clashes between the community and police, and charges that the police response has been excessive. The president was briefed last night by Attorney General Eric Holder and his senior advisor Valerie Jarrett. They are both here with him on Martha's Vineyard. Not unusual for this president to weigh in on matters of race and law enforcement. We saw this, of course, in the wake of Trayvon Martin. The other big issue that the president has been monitoring, Lester, developments out of Iraq. We know that yesterday a U.S. team gained access to the Sinjar Mountain, determined that there were fewer of those ethnic minorities on top of the mountain, which has greatly decreased the chances for a U.S.-led evacuation. The White House always says the office of the president travels with Mr. Obama wherever he goes. This vacation, an indication of that. And here now the president. Good afternoon, everybody. The sound system's really powerful. Uh, Today, I'd like to update the American people on two issues that I've been monitoring closely these last several days. First of all, we continue to make progress in carrying out our targeted military operations in Iraq. Last week, I authorized two limited missions, protecting our people and facilities inside of Iraq, and a humanitarian operation to help save thousands of Iraqi civilians stranded on a mountain. A week ago, we assessed that many thousands of Yazidi men, women, and children had abandoned their positions to take refuge on Mount Sinjar in a desperate attempt to avoid slaughter. We also knew that ISIL terrorists were killing and enslaving Yazidi civilians in their custody and laying siege to the mountain. Without food or water, they faced a terrible choice, starve on the mountain or be slaughtered on the ground. That's when America came to help. Over the last week, the U.S. military conducted humanitarian airdrops every night, delivering more than 114,000 meals and 35,000 gallons of fresh water. We were joined in that effort by the United Kingdom and other allies pledged their support. Our military was able to successfully strike ISIL targets around the mountain, which improved conditions for civilians to evacuate the mountain safely. Yesterday, a small team of Americans, military and civilian, completed their review of the conditions on the mountain. They found that food and water have been reaching those in need, 
and that thousands of people have been evacuating safely each and every night. The civilians who remain continue to leave, aided by Kurdish forces and Yazidis who are helping to facilitate the safe passage of their families. So the bottom line is, is that uh, the situation on the mountain has greatly improved, and Americans should be very proud of our efforts. Uh, because the skill and professionalism of our military and the generosity of our people, we broke uh, the ISIL siege of Mount Sinjar, we helped vulnerable people reach safety, and we helped save many innocent lives. Because of these efforts, we do not expect there to be an additional operation to evacuate people off the mountain, and it's unlikely that we're going to need to continue humanitarian airdrops on the mountain. The majority of the military personnel who conducted the assessment will be leaving Iraq in the coming days. Uh, and I just want to say that as Commander-in-Chief, I could not be prouder of the men and women of our military who carried out this humanitarian operation uh, almost flawlessly. Uh, I'm very grateful to them, and I know that uh, those who were trapped on that mountain uh, are extraordinarily grateful as well. Now, the situation remains dire for Iraqis subject to ISIL's terror uh, throughout the country, and this includes minorities like Yazidis and Iraqi Christians. It also includes many Sunnis, Shia, and Kurds. Uh, we're going to be working with our international partners to provide humanitarian assistance to those who are suffering in northern Iraq wherever we have capabilities uh, and we can carry out uh, effective missions like the one we carried out on Mount Sinjar. Uh, without uh, committing uh, combat troops on the ground. Uh, we obviously uh, feel a great urge uh, to provide some humanitarian relief to the situation, and I've been very encouraged by the interest of our international partners in helping on these kinds of efforts as well. We will continue airstrikes to protect our people and facilities in Iraq. Uh, we have increased the delivery of military assistance to Iraqi and Kurdish forces fighting ISIL on the front lines. Uh, and, perhaps most importantly, we are urging Iraqis to come together to turn the tide against ISIL, above all by seizing the enormous opportunity of forming a new, inclusive government under the leadership of Prime Minister-designate Abadi. Uh, I had a chance to speak to Prime Minister-designate Abadi uh, a few days ago, uh, and he uh, spoke uh, about the need for the kind of inclusive government uh, a government that speaks to all the people of Iraq uh, that is needed right now. Uh, he still has a challenging task in putting a government together, uh, but we are modestly hopeful uh, that uh, the Iraqi government situation is moving in the right direction. Now, second, uh, I want to address uh, something that's been in the news over the last couple of days, and that's the situation in Ferguson, Missouri. Uh, I know that many Americans have been deeply disturbed by the images we've seen in the heartland of our country as police have clashed with people protesting. Uh, today, I'd like us all to take a step back and think about how we're going to be moving forward. Uh, this morning, I received a thorough update on the situation from Attorney General Eric Holder, who's been following it uh, and been in communication with his team. Uh, I've already tasked the Department of Justice and the FBI to independently investigate the death of Michael Brown, along with uh, local officials on the ground. The Department of Justice is also consulting with local authorities about ways that they can maintain public safety without restricting the right of peaceful protest and uh, while avoiding unnecessary escalation. I made clear to the Attorney General that we should do what is necessary to help determine exactly what happened and to see that justice is done. I also just spoke with Governor Jay Nixon of Missouri. Uh, I expressed my concern over the violent term uh, that events have taken on the ground and underscored that now is the time for all of us to reflect on what's happened and to find a way to come together going forward. Uh, he is going to be traveling to Ferguson. Uh, uh, he is a uh, good man and an, uh, a fine governor, and uh, I'm confident that working together uh, he's going to be able to communicate uh, his desire to make sure that justice is done and his desire to make sure that public safety is uh, maintained in an appropriate way. Of course, it's important to remember how this started. Uh, we lost a young man, Michael Brown, in uh, heartbreaking and tragic circumstances. He was 18 years old. Uh, his family will never hold uh, Michael in their arms again. And when something like this happens, uh, the local authorities, including the police, have a responsibility to be open and transparent about how they are investigating that death 
and how they are protecting the people in their communities. There is never an excuse for violence against police or for those who would use this tragedy as a cover for vandalism or looting. There's also no excuse for police to use excessive force against peaceful protests or to throw protesters in jail for lawfully exercising their First Amendment rights. And here in the United States of America, police should not be bullying or arresting journalists who are just trying to do their jobs and report to the American people on what they see on the ground. Uh, put simply, we all need to hold ourselves to a high standard, uh, particularly those of us in positions of authority. Uh, I know that emotions are raw right now in Ferguson, uh, and there are certainly passionate differences about what has happened. Uh, there are going to be different accounts of how this tragedy occurred. There are going to be differences in terms of what needs to happen going forward. Uh, that's part of our democracy. But let's remember that we're all part of one American family. Uh, we are united in common values, and that includes belief uh, in equality under the law, a basic respect for public order, and the right to pe uh, peaceful public protest, a reverence for the dignity of every single man, woman, and child among us, uh, and uh, the need for uh, accountability when it comes to our government. So uh, now's the time for healing. Now's the time for peace and calm on the streets of Ferguson. Uh, now is the time for an open and transparent process to see that justice is done. And I've asked that the Attorney General and the U.S. Attorney on the scene uh, continue to work with local officials uh, to move that process forward. Uh, they will be reporting to me in the coming days about what's being done to make sure that happens. Thanks very much, everybody. President Obama taking no questions there, making a, about a 10-minute long statement, first of the situation in Iraq, what he says has been, has been a successful humanitarian uh, effort there. But speaking mainly on what's been happening in Ferguson, Missouri, where for a fifth night there were violent clashes between protesters and police. The president saying it's time to take a step back. He acknowledged people's right to a peaceful, uh, uh, peaceful public gatherings. At the same time, condemned any violence. No excuse, he said, for attacking police. I want to go to NBC's Ron Allen, who's been covering the situation in Ferguson for us. Uh, what's been happening on the ground there today, Ron? Well, Lester, a lot of activity. The governor is here. Senator Claire McCaskill is here. We know that the police chief is meeting with officials from the Justice Department and community leaders trying to step towards reconciliation and trying to figure out how to get calm back into this community. There's a lot of concern about what's going to happen again tonight. Now, I think people will be very glad to hear President Obama speaking about the situation because many in the community simply do not trust the local leadership here and they want the federal government to play a very active role. In fact, they want them to take over the investigation into the death of Michael Brown. There are parallel investigations going on right now, but there is so much deep mistrust that the people want the federal government here. Last night, just incredible scenes on the streets of an American Midwestern suburb. Uh, many people are saying that the police just seem to use too much force. Heavy weaponry, SWAT teams, the, the weapons at times trained on the crowds. People are just saying if that continues, the violence will continue here as well. Lester? All right, Ron, thanks very much. We will have full coverage on both these major stories coming up tonight on NBC Nightly News. For now, I'm Lester Holt, NBC News, New York.